how you doing? I am your host, Rich from Rich to Be Live, with our very special guest, Gianni Kovacevic, the CEO of Copper Bank. How are you doing today, Gianni? I'm very good, Rich, and I'm glad to be on your program for the first time. It's very good timing, I think, for the, the themes that we're going to talk about today. Fantastic. I'm very excited about learning more about your project and your company. Can you tell us in 90 seconds, through a 90 second pitch, about Copper Bank? And why should a retail investor want to follow the story? Well, Rich, I followed commodities for 25 years and they're very cyclical, but my background is in electrical studies. So I understand fundamentally what the Green New Deal is and how it works, which is why copper is gonna be the single biggest beneficiary from this trade. And you're considered the copper guy. Why are you the copper guy? Well, I've, I've done a lot of media. I understand it. I've earned my position. I'm not a braggart. I have a best-selling book to really enable people to have a five-hour dinner with me. So my book is on Amazon. My electrician drives a Porsche. It's all about the electrician. It has nothing to do with fast cars. So in 2017, I was invited to keynote the famed copper dinner in Santiago, Chile, in front of 5,000 people. Once again, I'm not a braggart, but I earned it. We know copper. My team has over 300 years of collective experience. We know anyone who is anyone in the copper business. We are one degree of separation from these people. So people should have a lot of confidence. We don't just go from trend to trend. I have followed copper and invested in a lot of copper deals. And this is our our bear market buy was buying projects, putting it into one company so retail investors can participate in copper for this trend. And that company is Copper Bank today. Now, investors are so fickle and there's so many ways to invest. There's crypto, there's stocks, there's gold, there's Forex, there's everything now these days. And there's the chance, like you just mentioned, for a potential 10x, maybe even a 3x why invest in Copper Bank now? Why not just wait? Well, it's been one of those stories. The, the whole electrification and invest in copper has always been next year's investment dollar. No longer. The copper price today is climbed and keeps climbing. It's at three over $3.80 a pound. Yet these juniors have not really had the big move. So let me be clear here. The oil and copper prices are, are highly correlated and typically oil was the dominant commodity. Let's go back 20 or 30 years. But if you were to picture in the theater of your mind, these two commodities trading up and down, copper at 380 a pound, Rich, is like if oil was $115 a barrel. Wow. You imagine the euphoria that would be in the oil sector if that's where the commodity was? That's exactly where copper is, and it's going to trend higher, and there are many reasons why. It's, it's really the engineering. And you can now, rather than wait, I believe, a long period of time, the, 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 the speculator interest in copper is coming to fever pitch, and that's the metal. But now is going to come, people. I, I believe people are going to start speculating on the, on the junior stocks. And what we own is th th this portfolio of well-situated projects, that have been adequately de-risked and with the, the little bit of capital we're raising right now, I think is going to add a, a real turbo drive into various initiatives that we have. And that's what we're going to talk about. Wow. That's great. The copper space is starting to pick up because of all the electric cars coming to market and the global talk about green new deals with an S on the end deals because deals are happening everywhere, meaning plural. What's the potential for copper in this trade and theme? So here's why the commodity is interesting. I don't care if it's hogs or logs. When a commodity starts flirting with its old all-time high, Rich, you end up in a mania phase. Now, when copper was $4 a pound, that's the last mania phase. We're now 383 a pound, so it's very close. And if you look at where's the future of copper, most copper is used to fabricate something that generates, transfers, or utilizes electrical energy, okay? But today, as we speak, only 20, 20% of final energy usage is actually electrification. 
And that took 130 years to install the current global electrical networks. In the next 30 years, actually it's gonna be less than 30 years because of these green new deals, all these infrastructure things and renewable energy and everything that you hear about in the media, we are gonna require as much copper as was installed in the last 130 years in the next 25. Wow. The kegger growth rate, the demand growth for copper, the middle of the road scenario, not, not something crazy and not epic fail, but middle of the road is 6% kegger growth rate on the commodity. And so that is something where it, it's simply not possible. We found a lot of copper, low grade copper um, deposits and resources, but nothing that of high, really high grade co concentrations which is almost an insurance policy, that, insurance policy that copper prices are going to go much higher and more importantly, stay there. Because the people that use copper, people that make cables, transformers, motors, windings, all those things, their business is going to boom like they've never seen before in the last hundred years because all these things require these electrical components. And so they're going to be buying more copper. And so it's it, it, naturally, it's going to um, give a real bid to that sector, but here's what happens. It's a thin market and it's it's basically balanced. What happens and what's happening right now is speculators are taking copper from that market and hoarding it for investment purposes. So you now have all these tens of thousands of people that, fab that need copper cable and for fabrication purposes, they are now tripping over themselves. So what you're seeing is you're going to have it probably an overreaction price-wise. The price is going to go higher maybe even than it deserves to because all these people are now tripping over themselves and tripping over speculators, which is why you've seen the copper price um, be, had such a radical increase in the past sort of nine months. Now, Copper Bank recently announced that it will raise up to $1 million 50,000 by issuing 3 million shares at 35 cents per share by way of private placement. That's only 4% dilution. Please tell us how you plan to use those funds. More specifically, explain each, each asset that Copper Bank owns and how, because relatively speaking, 1 million is not a lot of capital. So how can that 4% in dilution significantly enhance the value of those projects? That's a very important question. And people should know that mining is ruinously expensive. So the people that we acquired our projects from, first of all, they took share equity. We didn't pay cash. People always say, well, if they're so good, why'd they sell? They didn't, they took shares. They had to buy into the future as well. And they invested or excess $120 million is what it would take to duplicate all the work on our portfolio. Wow. So we have a lot of data. A lot of drill, drill holes have been there, a lot of en historical engineering studies. So what we're looking to do now is review that work and find where can we do additional drilling and how can we, we enhance the portfolio. And this does not require millions of dollars. This requires thousands of dollars because it's really about the team putting boots on the ground and presenting the evidence um, to more senior companies and to the market. So let me be clear. Raised a million dollars. That's going to give us enough GNA for two full years of holding costs. We are extremely careful about dilution, Rich. That's because my team and, and the group, we own equity. We own millions of shares. We do not want to dilute ourselves. We will, I will believe I will make my fortune in this trade in, in, with this commodity with Copper Bank, where I am the largest shareholder by owning shares, not with a salary. And so we throw pennies like manhole covers. We are starting to do a little bit of marketing and we feel that this million dollars can answer some unanswered questions. We can present this data to the market and with our current market cap of 28 or $30 million, depending on the, how it trades up or down. So at, at around 36, 37 cents per share, we feel that we have all these other trade winds going behind us, but now we need to move the ball down the field with the portfolio. And fortunately, because it would take in excess of $120 million to duplicate everything that's already occurred, this is not um, a big expense. It's really about having people reinterpret the, um, the historical information and get us ready to then present to the market where we want to drill in the future. And so um, I, I guess answering your question the long way, long way around, this million dollars is going to give us a quantum leap of information and it, it also fortifies to the existing people that have followed the strategy that we are not going to have any kind of uh, needless dilution uh, unless we want to move the portfolio forward. And that will only occur 
if we have what I believe should be significant share price appreciation because of all the different trade winds that are supporting the copper trade right now. Now, we love here at Rich TV Live tight float stocks, tightly held share structures, management that's very responsible and knows exactly where every single share is. Those are the deals we love. Can you break down your share structure with Copper Bank and how much is held by insiders? The management and insiders hold in excess of 25% of the company. Now, how did I obtain my position? I have seven pages of insider filings. When our stock was cheap, we did not do um, overly dilute the strategy. We raised enough capital internally. We always did this at a premium without issuing warrants. And we did this with the group so that people that were thinking about owning the stock or, or already purchased the shares are all treated equally. We, you don't have to feel like, oh, there's another five-year warrant coming for the insider group on a, on a discounted share. That has not been our strategy and that will not be our strategy. So when, when the stock was cheap, rather than do these kind of fortunatist financings, we bought the stock. I have seven pages of insider filings and that is predominantly how I was able to obtain my position, supporting the company with these above market financings and my seven pages of insider filings. So when you look at those are the insiders and management, we also have a couple of key supporters that have big positions in big blocks. But that's just me telling you, you know, what maybe what you want to hear. Look at the stock, look how it's traded. Since January 4th, we have traded about 14 million shares at the financing price. This the financing that we're going to close next week, which is 35 cents a share. That's real data. We, we've had a, 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 probably the single largest five-week period of trading volume in the stock's history. And if you look at that, what, what that should do is I, I believe it's leading up to, if you're a technical, um, doing technical analysis, you could just look at that basis. They're all within one penny trading around 36 cents Canadian. And uh, I believe we're ready for another breakout. We close our financing next week and we, we're going to start presenting a lot of news flow and data from the work that the team has been doing. And of course, we got that positive copper trade wind. There are not a lot of listed companies that have more than one copper development project in a portfolio of exploration projects. And we have that. We have like really three businesses in one company in Copper Bank. Development, exploration, and then when we're successful there, Rich, we have a built-in royalty company where we can create royalties on the portfolio and we look to monetize that. We're certainly not going to move these projects forward or if we're, you know, if we were successful in monetizing them, um, we're going to keep that back. So multiple different channels that we, we believe are going to be able to provide our shareholders a return outside of share price appreciation. That's exciting. I like that. If there was one thing you would want shareholders to know about your company, what would it be? Well, we're owner operators and unlike many other companies um, that are listed, we're investors like they are. The whole rationale and why we structured Copper Bank was because I like, you know, investing or speculating in drill hole plays as well in commodities. That's where fantastic fortunes have been made in the past. But in that bear market that we saw, you, you, you couldn't just keep feeding companies a million dollars a year for GNA because it's you just your value gets eroded. So we wanted to control projects that we thought that were had the potential to go into a development arc in the next bull cycle. We have that bull cycle now. And we were able to uh, position ourselves and, and create a structure of a company that's got the right share count, um, the right trading volume, the right address. We're located in Nevada and Arizona. And I think for our, if we ever do a follow-up interview, we can probably dig more into the details on the projects. And that'll be more important because I'll have more news to deliver where I can articulate why I think that um, that will be important for the industry itself and, and where the industry is growing and why Arizona and Nevada are going to continue to be a top jurisdiction in global copper mining. But um, ultimately, it's about timing. And I think if you, if you look at a chart, if you look at where we raised our capital and, and where we're going forward with this copper trade, I think the timing is very good. I agree with you. I think the timing couldn't be better. If you guys like this video, please smash the like button, comment down below, share the video everywhere. Remember, Rich TV Live is strictly for education and entertainment purposes. Past performance is not an indication of future results. My opinion on this stock, I think it's undervalued, underappreciated, underexposed. It's the first time we've ever talked. It's the first time our community has ever seen this pick. And based on what you're telling me, Gianni, I think the upside in the future looks bright. 
Thank you for joining us today. Gianni Kovacevic, the CEO of Copper Bank. Hope you have a great day and thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Gianni. Thank you. Thank you.